That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks. We're out of the bye. We're back into action, and it does it doesn't feel like it. And that has me on alert entering this pick game edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, thank you for being here. You can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. Notifications on that way you alerted every time a new episode drops. I knows you don't want to miss it. Twitter, search bar, always Irish, rat, always Irish, Inc. Emails, always Irish, Andy at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. You can locate it to call Linlands. 312 988 You tell Johnny, oh, Michigan's illegally heard and seen. Oh, I like that. Instagram, Facebook, always Irish, Inc. USA Today, Fighting Irish, where I read all about it, patreon.com slash Always Irish, John Kennedy, Mike Goolsby. You, that's a deadly combination in Notre Dame media, folks. Thank you to everybody that's subscribed. Uh, all right. Here's the deal. You get the big USC win. Love it. Enjoyed the hell out of it. They are melting down. It's gorgeous. Then we're in the bye. USC loses to Utah. That cranks up all the LA media stuff and and, uh, Lincoln Riley, nowhere to be seen, no players available, whatever. I don't know what's going on, but it's bad. So you're enjoying that through Dubai if you're a Notre Dame guy, whatever. You're laughing at them. I know I was. Watching the USC media meltdown, it's beautiful. It's the same thing people do to me when we lose. It's fair. Always it's fair. Then you get the Michigan story. And you know how it is. Whenever Notre Dame's involved in something, whenever uh, Michigan's involved with some these big name programs, it takes over the internet, social media. Just this is it. So what I'm feeling is, as we progressed into this week, getting out of our buy and back into gameplay mode, all the attention has been on Michigan and what's going on there and all those narratives and all those storylines, what's true, what's not true, how big of a deal is it, all those debates. And then all the USC stuff, they're falling apart, whatever. This has all dominated our attention. Nobody's talking about Notre Dame Pitt at all. Nobody's talking Notre Dame Pitt at all. Uh. Goolsby and I recorded something the other day, and we were going to just cover a bunch of topics. And we went over an hour before we even got to Notre Dame Pitt. And we didn't mean to do it. It's just the conversation went where it went. And it is a hotter topic right now to debate the Michigan thing to talk about Notre Dame and two and five Pitt and their little baby biatch whining coach they got. So all I'm saying is we need to all wake up and realize Notre Dame's got a game to win and they got to go 4-0 on the back end of this season for it to be a success, in my opinion, to any extent. The maximum extent success ended first week of October. You had two losses, you're out of the playoff. You're done. You're done. That's all Notre Dame plays for. You're dead. The next best thing is going 10-2 and and winning a major bowl game. You don't know how the major bowl game things are going to be slotted out and if you're going to be in one at 10-2, and but you definitely ain't going to be in one if you're not 10-2. and Go 4-0. Go 4-0. This next four-game stretch is not the one you completed before to buy. Two winnable games, buy, two teams you should kill, and you're out of the season. I understand some of you are going to go, oh, don't count Clemson out. No, 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 no. I'm not counting Clemson out. I know they have athletes. That's going to be a physically tough game in Death Valley. I'm glad it's a day and not at night. However, that team's not Ohio State. It's not USC's offense. It's not a top five defense. This year. Like, you should be able to navigate that one. Even as mad as they are, and they're going to want to do what we did to them, and it's flipped, all of that, I get it. No, this four-game stretch ain't nothing like the last one. That's my overall point. I hope we can all agree on that. 
So you got to go 4-0, and and that's all Johnny knows, okay? So getting into Pitt, it, it's just on my radar that nobody's been talking about it, and I'm a part of that problem. That's the other thing. I'm not going to go through this speech and act like the video I did in the last week that got the most views wasn't me ripping Michigan. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. So I may be a part of the very problem I'm bitching about. I'm still saying it's a problem, though. Nobody's talking about this stupid game. What Notre Dame fans want is to see a rejuvenated Irish team, a re-energized Notre Dame squad, a more healthy bunch of fighting Irishmen. A whole new offense. (laughs) Like, if we're going down a list of things Notre Dame fans want to see out of the bye, I'm going to add that one to it. I think you might see some of those other items show themselves. You ain't getting a new offense. Are you kidding me? If that, look at it this way. If Parker had all last winter and summer to devise Notre Dame's offense this year with Sam Hartman, and this is what he came up with in like five or six months. What in the world makes you think two weeks is enough to change it all to make it look like what I want, which is a real offense in the modern era of college football? You ain't getting that from Notre Dame this year. So I don't know. What is realistic to expect Notre Dame to improve on on offense? Maybe just getting the Jadens back healthy opens things up enough now that we're not as bogged down and you can throw it more and you have those guys running. I don't know. Or maybe this is strictly what Freeman said nobody liked hearing is, yeah, we're going to run what we're going to run and be more efficient at it. You better get a hell of a lot more efficient. They're not doing the O-line rotation. It's going to be all Coogan, Carell, Rocco's Modern Life, Blakey. So they're calming that down. I don't know if you make a big deal of it or not that Rico was listed at a Tobias in that depth chart. Is that a message being sent? Is it crediting Rico? Is it punishing Merriweather, lighting a fire under him? I don't know. Or does it mean nothing and we're so thin they're all going to get snaps and it doesn't really matter? I don't know what the reality is there either. My biggest thing to Notre Dame fans is I just, I, 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 we want to see offensive improvement. I I don't know what's realistic to expect. And, and I'm not saying that positively or negatively, like, like I'm not insulting the coaching. I, I just don't know in one bye week and then you prepping for Pitt, I don't know how much I could expect to change. There better be some wrinkles. That's what the buy's for. So there better be some wrinkles and some better efficiency. The other thing is, listen, Pitt excites nobody. Nobody's excited to see, you know, oh, wow, Narduzzi's coming to town. I got to watch that one. No one cares about Pitt. They're not good at football. They're two and five. They have a crybaby, whining bitch coach. Kate, nobody's excited about Pitt. Notre Dame better not sleepwalk after the bye. That's my number one thing. Before I even worry about the offensive efficiency or whatever. You you just can't have, I, I know you needed the bye. Notre Dame was beat up and exhausted, emotionally and physically, just like the fans. Everybody knows that. I just don't want it to be where we're too far out of our routine and we're too far out of sync of the week to week game day stuff to where you're midway through the second quarter and it's a 10 to seven ugly game against Pitt when they're two and five. I've seen Notre Dame play those Pitt games my entire life where no one in the world thinks they're great or that good. They're not in the mix to win any diddly poo anything. And they're playing Notre Dame down to the wire. I ain't here for that. I'm not here for that. After the four weeks we went through before this bye, buddy, no one is in the mood to see you sleepwalk 
into this one. It's at your place. I don't know what the weather's going to be, but it, I think the days of it being 68 and sunny in Notre Dame Stadium are over till next year. Going to be a kind of a gray a late October day against a 205 opponent. Nobody cares about. You're not in playoff contention. The last home game was popping because it was USC. This ain't that. I just want to avoid that. It would be really, really great to see Notre Dame come out, recharge, re-energize, ready to go, prove a point. And, and if you do that, here's the other part of it. If you present that way against Pitt, I'm going to be in a better mind frame to think about what you're going to be able to maybe do against Clemson. If you play good defense against Pitt and the offense scores 17 points again against Pitt, that's going to change the narrative and the concern level going into Clemson because you could lose to Clemson easily. Like Notre Dame fans would be fooling themselves after what we've seen and especially offensively to think, oh, no problem at all going to Clemson. You're an idiot. Like I know they have problems. We have some of our own. Like, we have some of our own. They're not as severe as what they're going through, but we have some of our own issues. If you don't play a good game, you're going to be in a dogfight the whole time and maybe lose to them at home. And then you're down to three losses. Uh, and that would also mean, just like last year, in the big three, who are the same big three, you have the same record. Different teams, because you will have lost to Clemson and beat USC. Nobody's here for that. Nobody's here for year two of Freeman to have the same results against those big three in terms of record. So it's a big damn deal to flip that to two and one. Okay. So I just want Notre Dame show up, energized, ready to play after the bye, get pumped up, try and go four and oh. Um, Pitt's not good. I mean, their last loss was just absolutely excruciating. Bad football. You're, lo you're scoring 17 points against Wake, and you're losing to their third-string quarterback? You got issues. You got issues. And, and again, the juice, there would have been juice to this game if Phil was the quarterback. That would have been the narrative. That would have given you the juice. Him being demoted to like tight end. I there, there's just no, there ain't nothing cooking for this game, folks. There's no angle. Phil was the angle. Narduzzi being a whining crybaby is the only other angle I got. Cause there ain't nothing to care about with this pit team. Now, as I say that, here's the flip side of this. Out of one end of the mouth, I said, nobody cares about this bad pit team. They beat Louisville 38-21. So what do I know? Like, I look at Pitt's record overall, and I look at all that. They're a bad football team. They had no problem piling up 38-21 to against Louisville. Now, I realize the transitive properties of football. You beat them, and they beat us, so then you would beat you. I realize that's not a perfect science. And I also want to say, in a lot of ways, Louisville losing that game made to wake it or to pit rather, it made the most sense in the world. Louisville's not used to being on top, not used to being king, not used to having all the big headlines, not used to being ranked that high. So they had their Super Bowl against Notre Dame, beat us, read their own headlines, slept walk into the next game and got beat and it was all over. That's how fast this stuff turns. That is evidence of a team that was not prepared to handle success. They beat us in that Super Bowl and emotionally, physically, and mentally forgot yet to show up the next week. It's a story as old as time itself. So... While I could totally understand why that all happened, I would be it would be I would be doing the wrong thing if I didn't just mention they beat the team you couldn't beat 38 21. You could have made the playoff with that six inch loss to Iowa State. 
But having your second loss by the first weekend of October, you're dead. That's a killer. You're dead. And so I need Notre Dame to show up. Uh, Seabell Flemister, the, the running back, very familiar to us. Shane Simon out there as well. Philly special as the backup fifth string tight end, whatever he's doing. I don't know. I went over a couple numbers in the uh, Wednesday call-in show. And I want to go over, there's a couple interesting things to note here for the pick game. One is, they are a rarity in the fact that they give up the exact amount of points they score per game. That's a little atypical, that it would land exactly at the same, it's like 24 and a half points. They give up, and they're scoring. Yards per game on offense, they're 115th. There's only what, 130 schools? Not good. Rush yards, 114, not good. Good luck, Sebo. Pass yards, they're in the top 100, 92nd, but not good. Offensively, they're not good. They're not good. I'm not Velo, Velu, Velu. I don't know what that name is. The quarterback, I ain't afraid of him. And he threw the ball 45 times last week, man. Good luck if you're going to... They can't run the ball. They can't run the ball. 114th in rushing. Notre Dame's good at defending the pass. This guy dropped back 45 times, bro. I can't... You're going to... That's a bad combination for them. But if they're not able to run the ball, they might feel like that guy's got to throw that much. And that's no playing into Notre Dame's strengths. So defensively, I really like the chances Notre Dame could have a good afternoon. I also think that it's just going to be easier for the defense to get into their groove coming out of the bye than the offense because the offense didn't have a groove going into the bye. I don't know any other way to say it. Like, it's easier to get in your groove when you had a groove to begin with. The offense never even had a groove. Find a groove like the one in my head. So defensively though it's interesting so they allow 24 and a half that's 64th overall 26th in rush yards allowed per game 48th uh wait i messed that up 48th in rush yards allowed 26th in passing 15th in the nation in tackles for a loss Pass yards, 27th. Turnovers created their uh, 79th with nine. All I'm doing with these stats is they're better on defense than they are on offense. Um, and I, it's a good challenge for Notre Dame. You don't have to be perfect to beat these guys, but you got to get stuff going. And this offense just has to have a, a different gear to it, a different look to it, a different vibe to it. There has to be some change. I realize you can't get four new wide receivers in here over the bye. I, I realize you can't expect Parker to rethink everything. Give me something, bro. Give me something. All right. 48th in rush defense, 15 in tackles for loss. This will be a good little challenge. So if they do have a strength that's on the defensive end, um, energy, just, just, I, it can't be we're zombies. It's Halloween and we're all zombies out of the bye. I'm going to lose my mind. I didn't wait a half a month to see you play again for that. Come out ready. Come out crisp. Come out physical. Play good defense. Be more efficient at offense. Show me a few more things. Am I asking for too much? You can't get to 10-2 and two and you can't get to 4-0 and oh on the final uh, part of the season unless you win this one. Got to have it. Need to have it. Beat the hell out of Pitt. They're annoying. And Narduzzi sucks. 